5.2, we are going to use trig to find the measure of missing angles. So as a review, sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. Okay. So if you know two sides, you can find the angle by using the inverse trig function. So before we go on, I want to point something out to you. If using sine or cosine, okay, the denominator must be greater than the numerator. That's a quick way to tell if you've got that set up straight, set up properly. The denominator, the value at the bottom, has to be greater than the numerator, the value at the top. If it's not, you're going to get error messages when you use sine or cosine in the calculator. So example one, continuing to highlight my hypotenuse. So notice that the values that I'm given are the legs. This is the opposite leg. This is the adjacent. So since there's no hypotenuse involved, we're using tangent. So we're taking the tangent of x equals the opposite over the adjacent. Now with tangent, you don't have to worry about the denominator being greater than the numerator. So we're good here. Then in your calculator, or the inverse of tangent is tangent to the negative 1. And this is what you're going to put in your calculator. And you can find your inverse tangent button on your calculator. And when you plug that in there, rounding to the nearest degree, you get 66 degrees. Example 2. Notice that I highlighted the hypotenuse. So our options here, again, are sine or cosine. So I look to see what side I'm given. And notice it is the opposite side, which means we will use sine. Sine of y equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Notice that my denominator value 48 is greater than my numerator, 43. So I have that in the right order. To solve for y, I'm going to take the inverse sine of 43 over 48, plug that in the calculator, you get 63.6. We want it to the nearest degree. Here's the nearest degree. It's followed by a 6, so this gets rounded up to 64 degrees. For example 3, again, highlighting my hypotenuse, I'm given that value, so that means I'm going to use sine or cosine, and it depends on what other side I'm given. In this case, I'm given the adjacent side, so we're going to use cosine. Cosine of C equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We're going to take the inverse cosine of 30 divided by 35. That's going to give us 31.0. Again, we want to round to the nearest degree. The next digit is 0. So C is 31 degrees. All right. Example 4. We have our hypotenuse and adjacent side. So that means we're going to use cosine 
The ratio is 16 over 25. We will take the inverse cosine of 16 divided by 25, which will give us 50.2, which means x is approximately 50 degrees. Example 5, again we're given the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. So once again we're going to use cosine, but now cosine A equals 12 divided by 20. Take the inverse cosine of 12 divided by 20, and that gives us 53.1. Rounding to the nearest degree, we get 53 degrees. Our last example is we want to find the measure of angle B. Notice we don't have any information about our hypotenuse, so this is going to be tangent. With tangent, you need to pay attention to what is the opposite and the adjacent side. So I'm going to start with tangent of B equals the side opposite angle B measures 4 and the side adjacent to angle B measures 7. So now we're going to take inverse tangent, 4 divided by 7, that's going to give us 29.7. Again, we're rounding to the nearest degree, so our rounding value is 7, that means we're going to round up, and B equals approximately 30 degrees.